afternoon, Jumbo, to our Kenyan viewers. You're watching Reach Around at Home, CNBC Africa. I'm Mandla Gazimpatra Sitao. We start in South Africa where shares of MTN Group surged as much as 14% on the JSC today. Zimbabwe's largest gold miner, Metalon Gold, has reportedly stopped operations at its five mines across the country, resulting in 5,000 people losing their jobs. CEO Colin Gura says the closures are as a result of delayed payments for gold delivered to the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, which has a monopoly on the country's gold trade. Take us through what happened on the bourse today, first of all. We had 71 gainers today, as against um, 22 losers and 32 stocks that remain flat today. Starting off right here in South Africa, the JSC uh, staying uh, in negative territory. The Nairobi Stock Exchange uh, faltering in its upward climb uh, in the latter part of last week. For more market analysis right now, I'm joined by Robert uh, Ndua of Tsalva Securities. Robert, thanks for joining us this afternoon. And if you could, take us through a trade at the NSE today. Africa's growth story has pretty much been a commodity one for the most part. Are we at the end of uh, a not so happy ending here? Well, what, what we've seen of, obviously over the past few years is Africa being driven by commodities to a large extent, but there were also other factors that, that, um, that pushed African growth. <laughs> That's the problem of elections. That's what we get out of elections. We are not parties, we are uh, tribes. So I can confirm that the signing of the memorandum was really gave the people of Zimbabwe a sign of hope. Uh, but you know, let's be realistic. Signing a memorandum of understanding is different from negotiation. Do you know that a loaf of bread in Zimbabwe costs the equivalent of 17 local South African rand? So the sense of urgency among Zimbabweans for a deal must be quite pressing. I need you to sing happy birthday to your longtime friend. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. How old are you now? <laughs> State secret. How old are you now? How old are you now? Happy birthday to you. Beautiful. You people, Ray. Malawians hit the polls tomorrow in what has been touted as the most hotly contested presidential elections in the country's history. Incumbent President Bingu Wamuturika is running on a democratic progressive party ticket. The is shaking and our opponents are confused and frightened. They have good reason to be scared of the living. While Mutirika is expected to win against the background of an economic boom under his four-year rule. But the real test is yet to be faced. It's clear the global slowdown has reached African shores and the new government will need to maintain fiscal discipline. Because for this young economy, the future is bright. Welcome back. Tonight... We have two of the most colorful people in Kenyan politics. Art imitating life? That's exactly what happened when Africa's first political puppet show launched this week in Kenya. The buzz surrounding the premiere of XYZ has been huge. We uh, wanted to do a, a political satire show. And uh, this, you know, at times we, uh, we are mistaken as a comedy show. No, it's not a comedy show. We want to do a political satire show. Many say the current political climate in Kenya is ripe for satire. And with Kenyans' deep disillusionment towards their leaders, it looks like there's plenty of scope for X, Y, Z. Kenya's savanna and white sandy beaches are losing their charm. For tourists caught up in the midst of a financial crisis, it's a far and expensive destination when money is tight. The global economic recession has had very serious consequences and impacts on the tourism sector here in Kenya. And I think uh, for us it is like a double tragedy. 
Plans are underway to shield the industry, but whatever the solution, it will take some time before holidaymakers return to Kenyan shores. Where do you go when banks go bust and the stock markets you can't trust? Art is often seen as a place where your money can weather the storm, but even Andy Warhol and Lucian Freud weren't enough this time around. Well, that great headline last night, I think it was the, um, one of the papers here, it said, death of, of, death of city bonus culture. And that is also going to translate into the death of kind of mid-market buying on that kind of frothy scale, both in auctions and in the galleries world, worldwide. If the art professionals are worried, they certainly aren't showing it. Because even though this credit crunch hasn't left much untouched, the art market still isn't seen to be as fickle as the world of the money markets. Take five. This is the set of Kadengano, or Reunion. It's another local production straight out of Uganda's budding film industry, also known as Yuga Wood. We started uh, for the last four years active in business, but at least we are doing good. Silence on location, loading and action. Yuga Wood is still a young industry, but if it wants to rival the heavyweights in Nigeria, it needs the necessary support.